Hello and welcome. My name is Arnie and I have with me today lovely Frederick Friedel. And uh, what we're talking about through the glass, but we will manage to uh, have it in a very nice convenient way. Anyway, databases. What is the base of the database? Can you emphasize on that a little bit, Frederick? You mean how it started? Exactly. Well, this may come as a surprise to you. Everyone thinks we were one of the first professional databases. And this was with Gary Kasparov and Matthias Weber and so on mm. in 1985. But the first commercial database is older. And I was involved somehow. And let me tell you the story. I had a very good friend. I'd made, I was a science journalist. I'd made a film with him, on him, about him. He played against a computer. This was the international master, David Levy, mm -hmm. who, for a bet, played against the most powerful chess computer in the world, chess playing computer in the world. And we made a film on it. And the next year, David came to me and said, let's cooperate on some, on a project. People were building chess computers. These are little sets where you can play against the computer. They were very weak. But he had something new. And I still have the very first model. This is a prototype we had at the time. And it was called Intelligent Chess. And you could play, play against it, but it had two or three unique features. One is you could connect it to here, to a television set, yeah. and you could see a graphic of the chessboard and the pieces and so on on the screen. So if you played one E4, the pawn would move up. And this was cutting edge technology. This is 1970 or 71, one, I'm not sure. <coughs> but it had something else. It could store the game and you could replay the entire game. Mm. And then we said, if you can replay the entire game and it's in memory, why don't we write the memory, give it the ability to write the memory to a cassette, a cassette recorder, cassette. Now, the younger viewers will not know what I'm talking about. Exactly. This was the cassette. And so... so <coughs> We started recording these, and then we said, hey, wait a minute. We don't need to record one game. We can record many games, one after another. And then when you're playing the cassette and make a mechanism which allows you to replay the games, one after another. And so we did that. And suddenly you could have 10 games and play one after another, and they were just run on your screen. And we said, hey, this is really good. And then we hired a young student of my, from the class of my wife, who was a teacher. His name was Ronald. Mm -hmm. And we gave him the task of entering all of Bobby Fisher's games <laughs> on this machine here. So he was typing the, he was typing the square. It, it wasn't in algebraic notation. Uh -huh. No, it was in long algebraic notation. Oh. So you had to type E2, E4, oh. and stuff like that. No piece names or anything. Oh. And he entered 750 <laughs> games. And here's the cassette which we made, Intelligent Chess. And it says all the games of Bobby Fischer. Unbelievable. Bobby Fisher's greatest hits now on cassette, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so this was the first database. Of course, you couldn't search or anything. We made a table of contents so you could see, go to one hour and 12 minutes to see game number so-and-so. Mm. And so you could just fast forward. And then uh, we had another idea, which I think was mine. Uh, these cassettes are stereo, so you have two tracks, but you only need one track for the data to tell the computer what to show on the screen. Mm -hmm. So we use the second track for voice recording, and suddenly Helmut Pfleger, who was our first grandmaster, Helmut Pfleger was our first commentator, he sat there, 
and he annotated a few dozen games. And we played the games on the cassette, on the screen, and he would say, and here, this is, this is going on, and he would explain. So suddenly you had a cassette which you could put into uh, the set, mm -hmm. and then uh, a lesson would come up on the screen and you could listen to it. So this was the very first rudimentary database without search functions or anything. <coughs> but you could actually enter a large volume of games and you could also store your own games. So you could have a collect on one cassette, you could have a collection of all the games you played in the chess club or in a tournament or whatever. That is absolutely It's so hard for me to understand. I'm born in 1979, <laughs> and uh, I know about cassettes. I had a lot of cassettes myself, and the only thing I knew was if you put it into a recorder or into a music system, it will play music. So even understanding the idea that there are two tracks and you can put uh, annotations on one track and have a commentary on another, With this device made out of wood in this size, uh, it's really hard to grasp. For Actually, me. I should mention that this is a prototype, and at some stage we had a crisis meeting <laughs> and said we can't sell this, uh, and you have to connect the uh, cassette recorder, an external cassette exactly, recorder. Yeah. So we got a professional company to design it in modern style with the cassette recorder built in. And this you can see here. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. So now when I'm looking at this system, it's called Intelligent Chess. Like it's, yeah, it's basically one of the first uh, prototypes as you just mentioned already. So I, w I can see there are buttons on top and of course, um, It says A1, B2, C3, and it goes up to H8 with all the pieces. And then it has an enter, a record, and a take back, which was the revolutionary thing back then. And uh, a lot of other buttons. So if I would want to play on a, on a TV screen, right? That's what yeah. it was for in the end. How would I make a normal pawn move from E2 to E4? Can you please explain this? Well. You had to type it in. Yes. You had to type E. Yes. The E key. Yeah. And now it's waiting for a numeral key. B key, which is the two key. And then the E key again. And then oh. the D key, which is four. <coughs> so you had to type it in. And I would like, I would like to remind you that poor Ronald Brinkman, <laughs> he did this for 750 games. <laughs> And, so uh, one game must have taken literally hours to make almost, probably. It uh, depends no. on uh, how long the games were, of no, course. No, he, he was a 15-year-old kid, <laughs> and they become very, very fast. <laughs> they just type, 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 type. You found out the passion immediately. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, this is... This is absolutely nice. I love the story behind all of this and how things got started in chess because, yeah, this was a big, big part of how a database can grow <laughs> with a big hardware device. Well, nowadays we have software and all of the data inside there, it, it's not even worth mentioning. That's how much data we can Uh, have with our 8 million games and more in the databases and something like this. This thing I should mention had a chip, what was it called? A CPU 6502, I think it was mm -hmm. called. And this was a cutting edge chip, the fastest thing you could get on microcomputers. And uh, I think it's it was as fast as my microwave chip today. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we sold it to department stores. Yes. And it was a success for a few months. And then it sort of died down. Mm. And one of the reasons was that the chess playing program was too weak. Yes. It was really weak. And I could, I could beat it easily and I can't even look at any computer I, today. I've read about it. It has an ELO of uh, people, say, around 1,200. 
That's, well, I that's think it was like less, in fact. Even less, yeah. Probably 1,000, 1,200 or something. Yeah. <clears throat> and at the time, people were buying computers in order to uh, help them play yeah. uh, correspondence, chess, or learn to become stronger players. And you can learn it by watching all the Fisher games. But Sure. So it wasn't a resounding success. And then they went on. So it was called intelligent chess, but it wasn't particularly intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we call marketing uh, back then. Well, thank you very, very much for this uh, nice introduction about the system, Frederick. That was absolutely fascinating, interesting, and I hope you enjoyed this too. And um, we will see each other soon for another Let's Talk About That series, I hope, again, with Frederick. Thank sure. you. Anytime. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.